it becomes very simple because you just put load on it and you look at it and say, oh, well, we need to fix this. The technical part of load testing process. So there was load testing Java Monitor and it just didn't perform. And I was like, what is happening? And I was looking, I had monitoring, so I was looking at everything. And the machine was bored, hardly an AIO. Memory free. There was CPU, well, we've got eight cores, four were used. Why doesn't it work? Why is everything PV failed? Why, when I have no slow queries on the database, does it do things time out? I don't understand. So then, I was like, I was doing uh, another talk, and one of the slides in that talk is performance problems are never where you think they are. I should put that slide in here because it applies here as well. So then I switched my monitoring from looking at the system under load to looking at the system I was using to generate that load. And that system was really, really straining. CPU, maxed out. Disk I.O., almost not there, good. It was dying. So I thought I was loading up my uh, system under load, but I wasn't. I was actually load testing my load generator, and I hit max. All right, so I added a second load test generator, which reduced load on the first one, and allowed me to, to scale up to bigger load. And suddenly, it was Java monitor that was struggling. Suddenly, I could see what Java monitor was doing. So if you do your monitoring, don't forget your load generator. Because they actually have to work as well. Alright, with all this set up, all this preparation, slide 39 and 47, we're going to talk about the actual methodology of load testing. Right? And this is Again, it all serves that purpose of the manager who wants to have his mind good at ease. So that is what you're thinking of when you're doing the load test, not the system. Okay, that's an interesting byword. That is a, a, a piece for your hands, if you will, while really you're working on something else. So if you're looking at a phone book, uh, you guys are developers, you know the answer to this question. If I have a phone book with all Egyptian phone numbers, and I have the name of the person I'm looking for, uh, how do I find the page that that name is on? Index. Uh, that's an interesting answer. So the answer is index. Uh, my answer would be binary search. Is that pretty well? Okay. Index. This is an index. You're, you're ruining my story. Thank you. So binary search. So what you do is you split the phone book in half, and then you look at the page where you're on, and you know I have to turn left or right, but you don't have to look at the half that you've just split off. You can literally tear that off and still be able to find that person. Uh, don't go tearing our phone books just because I said so, but that's the way it works. So that's also the way you work when you have a large system at the load. You know, if this is one little application server with a database, it's not very relevant. But usually, you get to work with, oh yeah, we've got this load balancer, we've got four web heads, we've got two application servers, we've got three databases, and then there are all the back ends. And oh, there's these scripts that the DBAs run now, you know. That's the kind of stuff you have to load test. You're like, okay. So how do you do that? I like making things simple. So this is a representation of any distributed system out there. So you've got your user, you've got the proverbial wall between reality and the system, and then there is the request of the user coming in, passing all the way through some components, and then back. And, and the actual image you should draw for yourself, but this is probably going to be, you know, the local DMZ, your application server, your database, and maybe the operating system underneath. Yeah, so maybe this is the disk, this is the database, this is your app server. You have to draw that picture, depending on what the application looks like. But make it simple, and these are the sort of the big domains that are there. This is the Java code that all the Java developers sit on. This is the Oracle database with the Oracle DBAs, and nobody knows where they are. You know, 
know, this is a network. Make it big, easily identifiable components. Then you start building up that system. And then what you do is you start eliminating components that work. That's an interesting one. People usually focus on the problem. Let's focus on the positive side for a minute. Let's see, you know, maybe the whole load balancer works. I've had this situation where there was a big production incident. I was working at the time as an as a application engineer, and I was tasked to solve that incident. And we had all these people from all these companions at the table, they were all yelling and doing stuff. So I started measuring in this way. I started measuring here. What was the response of? What was the performance there? Ignoring that the system is complex. I just split it in the middle like a funnel. And I could call this guy and say, you're doing a pretty good job. They're like, okay. But more importantly, I could say, you're not allowed to work on this production incident anymore. I don't want you in the meetings. That was a new one in that company. I can tell you. This is one of those companies where meetings is your job. So they were surprised. But for me, it means I have less mouth to feed. There's less discussion at the table. It's easier to reach a conclusion with four people than it is with five. So I did the same thing in the background. I was measuring, this was a, uh, an Orion, does anybody remember Orion application server? This was an Orion server, and that was the Oracle database. So I, I measured on the JDBC driver. I was doing the equivalent of MySQL slow log. So I was looking at the slow queries. And I called this guy, who was, who was our DBA, and I said, the problem isn't in the database. I could almost hear him fall off, off his chair. Nobody had ever said to him, the problem isn't in the database. It was a first. But it was. I, I, could, pin, I could prove without any doubt that the problem was in our domain. And nobody else had to do any discussion or even look for the problem. It was ours. And that brought a lot of peace. I remember that was the purpose. Peace. It, it gave to my manager the feeling, okay, at least we know where to look. He didn't have all these fighting engineers that talk a language that nobody understands. Not even amongst themselves. Instead, he had one person think, it's my problem, I'm going to solve this. And that's all that person wants to hear. Everything else is optional. Right? So what do I do? I take the system, I make big easy blocks, preferably blocks that belong to departments. And then I start slicing the system. Using the monitoring tool, I'm going to monitor what happens on the wire between the system. Right in the middle of that area, it's always forgotten, where it's not clear whose responsibility it is. That's where I start measuring. And that's the way I decide where the problem is. And it's very, very easy to zoom in on the right uh, problem. And you make some friends with the DBA. Alright, so then you've got a problem and you start experimenting. Because you want to solve it, yeah? I mean, we're now in the fun part. We have a problem. There's no discussion. All the, the managers, the non-technical people have left. Because they don't care anymore because somebody solved the problem. Good. Now let's do some engineering stuff. So we're going to do fixing a new problem, right? So what does that look like? I've got my original system with the bug in it. And I'm going to make changes, you know, I'm going to put more memory, which gives me a bigger patch. I'm going to make some changes, and at some point, well, the changes weren't very good, so we roll back, I hope. Did we do an automated report? I don't know. So we're going to fix some changes in JavaScript. Where do we fix that? On the production machine. Right on the front end. Obviously, why use subversion for that? No idea. So, wait, wait, for, for that we need jQuery to be a new version. Alright, so, but then we have some code changes for jQuery. So, you, you go into this woods of change after change after change, and then when you, as a you are at the back of the queue, and uh, guys, uh, so, so actually, how are we going to roll this out on production? They're like, no, no, we're too busy trying to make it work again. So this is a mess, and you can never reproduce it. So even if you come out here with a working system, I've got no idea how to get that onto production. Because you'd, you'd have no record of what changed. And this is four or five people.
people doing at the same time. So I've drawn one line from box to box. But these are three lines going concurrently. Good luck. These are the prima donnas saying, oh no, but the problem is here. I don't need to improve, I know it. I'll change this. Oh, it doesn't work. Oh, I'll try something else. Oh, did I roll it back? I don't know. So you need to take control, and it can be very hard. Usually your manager has to help you there, the guy who hired you. What really helps is saying, I can't do this because they don't do the work right. And then usually, since you're there to put his mind at ease, he's going to go, wait, just stay here for a minute. And then afterwards, they're nice and nice and help you. So what you do is you establish a process which says, I start with my original system, I do experiments, but after the experiment, we do color kill. We take the, the solution, we decide if it's good enough. And if it's good, we are going to update, imagine that, the installation guide. We're going to document what we did. Ooh, usually you have to start a new document by that time. And then you redeploy the app completely, all of it. I mean, it's all automated, isn't it? It's all automated, it works, it's redeploy, enter, done, clean. So you're in a fresh system, and then you go into the next stage, and you can hack. You can change things in the files on the you can replace class files. Good. Don't tell me you did that. Um, and if it doesn't work, well, we can just read the code. And we're back where we were. And yes, that means that your database schema is also part of your version of the system. It's not in the slides, I remember that. Your database schema is also versioned with your app. And with the redeploy, all the changes and hacks you've made have to be undone. Because just adding an index to try and it doesn't work means the index has to go away because indexes aren't free. They cost the CPU time, they cost everything. And yes, you can fix some JavaScript on the front end, and maybe on one machine, no problem. As long as you go full cycle all the way back to fresh system. And for an organization that used to work like this, that's a big change. And most importantly is that they will resist with all their might to do this. Because, oh, I know it, but it's no problem. Why do I have to redeploy? It works now, doesn't it? No, we have to redeploy it so that we prove that after redeploy it works. But I forgot what I changed. Well, there's a problem. Right? So that brings us to what you need for effective experimentation and the missing line, database schema versioning. I've seen this slide. And that brings us to the last So I've talked about all these things. You need to understand the goal and get the commitment you know how. Do the math, you know which math. Forget whatever you learned in school. Understand politics and do the experiments if you get to, put, get to the position where you can do them, do them effectively. Don't just randomly walk. Thank you for your attention. Are there any questions? I'm sure there are, but any that are suitable. So the question is, what if I do a, a low test in real life with a lot of users? Uh, yeah, I've, I've tried that. It's interesting. Um, it, it depends how you can organize this, but the, the, essentially it's the same problem as your test data. So uh, if you do this on a production system, will the low test interfere with production in the sense that will it introduce information to the system that you can didn't really want. Uh, how are you going to organize the accounts for everyone? How are you going to coordinate uh, that they do the right thing all the time? What are you going to do while the system is broken, the guys are fixing it, and they're waiting around idle because they will wait around a lot. So you need to keep them occupied. So I've done that uh, enough to avoid it at most costs. Yeah. And 
the end of the day, the only, only representative test is, is production. There is no other test. So, uh, maybe I can elaborate on that part. What I do, and uh, what people tend to avoid, is I bring the monitoring system as I use it for load testing, I bring that to production with the system. So to me, the monitoring is part of the system, as is the start script and the stop script. So that means that I can see in production what is happening, and if I do a, a live test and I do it on production, I can look into the system as I would uh, during the live test. So if you can organize this, hat off to you. All right. Thank you for your time. The next session will be at 6.30, okay?